If you're watching this video, then you want to know how I made $90,000 per year as a music producer at age 19. Now, last week, I uploaded a video titled How I Made $90,000 as a Music Producer at Age 19, and it kind of put me on the map a little bit. Um, I haven't seen this amount of views on a video in a very, very long time, and um, I got a fair share of positive comments and a huge amount of gratitude goes to those that supported me on that video, but I also got a few questioning people as well, asking me, how did you actually do this? What credibility do you have? And all of these different things. And I thought, that's it. I'm just going to sit down. I'm going to give everything that the doubters wanted in this video, because I'm aware that with new channels, you want to you know, make sure that it's coming from legitimate people. And um, But also, I'm aware that I didn't go into as much detail in that video as perhaps I could do. If you're watching this video to get a quick fix, um, then this video is not for you. Click off of it and go and watch some short form crap somewhere else. But if you're interested in learning on a detailed basis exactly how you can do the same and if not replicate even larger success than I did back then, then I want you to stay tuned. Uh, maybe you want to put your phone by the side and treat this like a little bit of a podcast. I'm going to over the next 10 to 20 ish minutes share with you in vivid detail exactly how I did it. So without further ado, let's get straight into it. Now, in my last video, I shared three basic steps to how I made my money as a music producer. And the first step that I mentioned was selling my music as a service. Now, in going into further detail in this video, I think it's only fair that I start off by sharing in detail what selling your music as a service is. Put simply, selling your music as a service is taking one of your greatest musical skill sets. And for me, back then it was production, but for you it might be songwriting, it might be top lining, it might be playing gigs and then selling that on as a service to musicians who aren't as good as you at that skill set. For example, if you're really good at songwriting and you're incredible at evoking story and emotion for your songs, there are plenty of people that I've come across before that aren't as good as you at that and that you can sell on as a service to so that they have better songs and you have money in your bank. Equally, for me as a producer, it was finding artists that needed good quality production. I wanted to build people out, uh, build their team out with people that they could trust and that they could respect. And that was really the main premise of where you get started. It's not with your tactile strategy or what style of beats you make or what tag you use on a YouTube video. It's by first having a crystal clear understanding that your ability to become full-time in music is purely predicated by your ability to find a market that is experiencing a huge problem. And for me with production, it was a lack of high quality production. People didn't feel like they're the right people on their team. Maybe they didn't feel like they had somebody that they could trust to mix and master their project as well to find that market and then present yourself as the best possible solution for that. Now that you have an understanding of what the foundations for that were, you're probably wondering, brilliant, I'm a good songwriter, I'm a good top liner, I'm good at production, but how do I actually go about finding those clients? This is where stages two and three come in. And stage number two is to do with outreach. And I briefly alluded to this in my previous video, and I banged on about how important outreach was, but you're probably wondering what outreach strategies did you use? And for me, one of the strongest ones back in 2019 was selling through the DM. Now, I don't need to speak to you, you know, in extensive detail about what selling through the DM is. Just to give you a basic overview, it's finding somebody on Instagram that you think that you can do business with, DMing them a compliment, and then ultimately generating a conversation with them, finding out what those challenges are that they're experiencing, and then possibly exploring how you could be a solution to those challenges that they're experiencing, either by jumping on a phone call or actually just doing it there and then in the DM. Now, I did this extensively for years. I did it from 2016 until 2019. But the biggest challenge that I had with it back then, and one of the biggest changes that I've made to Sinclair Media Group today, is I've taken the conversation out of the DM and put it into a phone call. So if you're currently selling through the DM, whether that be on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, or whatever it is, my strongest urge and recommendation for you to do is to take that conversation out into a phone call. And the reason that that is, is that 45% of human communication is through your body language and 45% of it is through your tone of voice with just 10% of it being through your words. Meaning that you're technically losing nine out of every 10 sales opportunities that you have just through selling through the DM. And that's one of the biggest challenges that people had. 
Now, you're probably thinking, okay, brilliant, David. You've just talked to me about how you sold through the DM. I've done that before, but I'm not really experiencing any results. And this is where the phone call comes in and being able to master the sales call. My biggest recommendation for you now, having been in business, been into entrepreneurship now for over six years, in the music industry specifically, is to give yourself a two call system whereby in the first phone call you build rapport with that prospect and you find out what their key challenges are and you also qualify them financially to see if they're a fit for your service. So then in call number two, if they are a fit and if you can actually help and service them based on the challenges that they mentioned to you in phone call number one, to have a longer format strategy session whereby in that strategy session you give a more long form introduction to who you are, what your service is and exactly how it will help them. So I just want to recover that quickly. I recommend after six years of entrepreneurship now, specifically in the music industry, that once you found that prospect through selling in the DM, like I did back in 2019, is to organize a phone call because 90% of human communication is not dependent on just the words that you say, but most importantly, your, vo your tone of voice and your body language to then have a two call system whereby in the first phone call, you build rapport with them, you identify their key challenges and you qualify them financially. If they're a fit, you can then organize a longer format, usually 60 minute strategy session, whereby on that strategy session, based on the challenges that they mentioned to you in the first phone call, you can then give a longer format demonstration to how your product, your service, and you will ultimately help them with those, ex those specific challenges that they're experiencing. Now you're probably wondering, okay, brilliant, David, you've told me that you sold through the DM, you told me that you organized a two phone call system with them, or that you recommend that I implement a two call system with them, what's next? And well, if you found yourself in a bit of a predicament right now, then it probably means that you've already been doing phone calls with artists. By the way, if you haven't done any of this stuff before, then that's the biggest challenge that you're having. And if you're about to go into the comments to say, oh, well, David, you know, that's not very detailed and et cetera, et cetera. It's because you haven't done anything yet. <laughs> you can't tell me that, you know, this isn't information that's relevant to you or that is detailed enough for you until you've actually done these things. You know, I've never had somebody criticize me that has done more than me. So if you haven't outreached to people at all and you haven't booked yourself any prospective phone calls, then I don't want you to have a little complaint yet. I want you to do those steps first. And once you've done those steps, and I might have some people watching this video thinking, I've done the phone calls, I've outreached to prospects, but I'm still not converting anyone. Then the biggest challenge that you're having is with the sales call itself. Now, bear in mind that I believe that a lot of musicians that have phone calls with other musicians that don't convert them actually has a lot more to do with the types of people that you're getting on the phone call with than it does your specific sales method. What I mean by that is that you're getting on the phone with people that don't have an intention to buy from you because they don't have the money and it's not the right timing for them. Whereas if I told you that with every single phone call that you're going to make over the next week is going to be on people that are 100% financially qualified and are 100% ready to work with you, how many of those sales opportunities do you think that you'd convert? And realistically speaking, you might convert anywhere between 50 to 80% of them because you're getting on the phone with the right people. The other 20%, they might not trust you. They might not believe you. They might not, maybe they've got other people that they're working with, whatever it is, you can't control every aspect of it. But if you're actually having issues with your sales calls at the moment, then it has way more to do with who you're getting on the phone call with than it does your sales methodology. Now, that being said, I will touch on sales methodology in a minute. But before we even get onto that, one of the biggest recommendations that I would have for you is to implement a qualifying form. I'm going to leave a link down below to one of our qualifying forms that we use that I really hope that you can implement into your sales process. So that before you get on the phone with somebody, before you commit that huge portion of your time to them, that you can actually see inside their music career and genuinely see if you have something that's of a fit for them. If it's out of their budget, if they're experiencing a problem that you genuinely cannot help with, then feel free to send them through some free resources afterwards so that you can give them a little bit of a hand. But do not commit your time to people that will never have an intention from buying you in the first place. It's a waste of your time. And most unfortunately, it's a waste of their time as well. People become bitter. They'll think that you've wasted their time and ultimately nobody wins. Now, with that qualifying form in place and assuming that you're getting on the phone with people now that are indeed qualified, you then need to focus on your sales process. 
And if you've implemented every single one of those steps up until now, which I doubt 95% of people watching this have done because it's not taught. And that's what my company, Sinclair Media Groups, help artists implement. Once you have all of those steps, and let's assume that you've done all of those, the final step is then, of course, to focus on your sales process. Now, personally speaking, I think sales is a little bit demystified generally around the world, regardless of what industry you're in. This doesn't just apply to musicians. I'm friends with people that are in the construction business all the way through to the business consulting space, all the way through to people that have worked with airlines. And regardless of what industry it is that you're in, sales is generally quite a dirty topic. Um, and unfortunately, that leaves a lot of people without training properly for sales because they never even entertain the idea that they are indeed a salesperson. If you want anything in your life, you're going to have to convince other people of something alternative to their own belief system. And that simply is what sales is. It's convincing somebody else that there could be an alternative option to what they believe to be true. And with you getting on the phone with the, with the potential clients of your music business, you need to convince them that there is indeed another solution, another way of achieving the goals that they have within their music career. For example, you might come into contact as a songwriter with other musicians that are finding it so incredibly difficult to build a fan base. Well, one might think you need to go and work with a music marketing agency. I don't think you do. I think if you're struggling to build a fan base, then it says infinitely more about the lack of quality in your music than it does your ability to market it. Because if your music was 100% effective at converting people into fans, then you'd already have about, I don't know, 10, 20, 30, 40 people that are dedicated fans coming to your shows, buying your tickets, buying your merchandise if you have it, listening to your music on a regular basis. But the reality is that your music isn't 100% effective. And in fact, for people that aren't particularly good at telling a story through their songs, if you're a songwriter, this is the service that you'll provide that you can help them build more emotion through their songs, that you can help them build a better story, that you can help them build a better brand through their music. That is the pain, that's the challenge that you're going to help them overcome. And through the sales calls and specifically through your sales methodology, it's your job to convince them of another way of helping them achieve their specific music goals. If you're a music producer watching this, you might be thinking, well, what's my pitch going to be in my sale? And it's much more to do with building a strong team that that musician has a desire for, of people that they can trust, of producers that understand their brand, that can help them understand and create their own specific unique sound in the industry. Producers are instrumental to an artist's success. And if at any moment you ever doubt yourself for thinking, well, all I do is make beats, you've got it completely wrong. A producer is there to help an artist create their own unique identity within not just the music industry, but the whole world, people that listen to that artist. Eminem wouldn't be Eminem without Dr. Dre, nor would Amy Winehouse be Amy Winehouse without Mark Ronson. And there are countless examples of artists that, have, that effectively have to thank a large portion of their career onto their producers and their sound design team, generally speaking, because they've helped them become who they are. So one thing that you'll be appealing to as a producer is building of a team, but other things as well within that are developing your own unique sound, developing your own unique brand within your own sound. Maybe you're dealing with artists that are struggling to find their genre and it's your job to help them find that genre because you have very clear creative consciousness, meaning that you're able to identify the strengths within any artist and then help them manipulate that into a, into a finalized product. These are just a few things that come to mind that I can think of. But within the sale, it's more about being able to convince somebody of an, alter an alternative solution to what they want to come true than it is the narrow-minded focus that they currently have. If you want anything in your life, you're going to have to convince other people of something alternative to their own belief system. And this is coming from somebody that has had phone calls with over 1,000 artists over the years. And 80% of them, 90% of them will tell me, oh, David, the biggest struggle that I'm having is building a fan base. The biggest struggle that I'm having is growing my Spotify stream. And indeed, I might be able to help them with my music marketing service at Sinclair Media Group. But equally speaking, I know that a lot of them will see significantly more results just by bettering the product that they have. So I just want to kind of take a quick bird's eye view here and bring us back to, you know, a more holistic thinking here and bring it right back to the beginning. Step number one, you need to have a keen consciousness of exactly what selling your music as a service means. If your strongest strength within music is within songwriting, then that's what you're going to be selling. If it's within production, then that's what you're going to be selling. If it's within singing and top lining, that's what you're going to be selling. 
If you're really good at getting gigs booked for yourself, then that's what you're going to be selling. The second thing that you need to figure out is what your chosen outreach method is going to be. Way up until now, Instagram DMs have been a bread and butter for me and my business. But equally, we're starting to experiment with things like email outreach. And I speak about email outreach at Sinclair Media Group with all of our members. It might be Twitter for you. It might be YouTube. But the specific outreach method that you need to be focusing on needs to generate positive conversations with prospects that are experiencing a particular challenge that you can help overcome. Once you've figured out your outreach method, the next thing that you need to focus on is sales. Now, within sales, I, as I mentioned earlier, I truly believe that you don't have a sales problem as much as you do a prospecting problem, meaning that you're that no matter how good you are at sales and convincing and being you know, a true salesman, the biggest challenge that I think that you're having is speaking to people that genuinely aren't qualified for your service in the first place. And the big recommendation that I have for you is to click the download link in the description of this video and to check out that form and implement it into your music business straight away so that you know that you're speaking to people that genuinely have the resources, the time and the energy to work with you. The final step once you've implemented all of those is what I recommended around a two call system, whereby in the first call you build a rapport with them, you identify what their challenges are and you see for a second time if they're financially qualified to then ultimately move into a longer form strategy session whereby in the strategy session, it gives you a little bit more time and opportunity to explain exactly why your solution is genuinely of a solution to them and something that just isn't that you've plucked out of the air and is somewhat irrelevant. Now, just a few things that I want to add at the end of this video, just for your own reference. Number one, you might have noticed why have a qualifying form if indeed we're gonna be qualifying on the first call anyway. And that's for a good reason. Often what people will tell you on a form can be very different to what they tell you on a phone call. And often what I found after having people fill out forms for my company is that I get on the phone with them and I qualify them for a second time and I tell them really what the implications are of working with me, i.e. it's this amount and this is how long you're going to be working with me for. And for some reason, it just creates a little bit more of a real, a real scenario for them, whereby actually this could be real and this could happen. And I'm just going to have a quick double, re double check here to see if this is something in fact that I want to do. The other thing that I want to clear up is that you might have noticed that I didn't speak specifically about what you need to say in the demo call and then with the strategy session. And that's because I'm saving it for a longer format video. So if you're interested in seeing what's included in those calls, then hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, and also hit the bell button so that you can be notified when I release those videos. And that's simply just because I don't want to sit here for 50 minutes talking to you about my sales strategy when in fact I could just do that in a shorter format, more punchy and basically more engaging video for you. The final thing that I want to throw in at the end is that you might have noticed that I didn't speak about how you can improve your sales. And for similar reasons to my last point, sales is a very complicated topic that takes and has taken me years to be able to become good at. I'm nowhere near where I could be with it. And there's plenty of things that I've learned along the way that I'm gonna be sharing on this channel in shorter format of videos throughout. But the reality is, is that, you know, I'm a small channel here. Barely anybody knows who I am at the moment. So if you stick around, what it means is, is that you and I can build a relationship. You can get to know a little bit more about what my philosophy and process is to growing a music business. And as a result of that, you'll then have the context for thinking with some of the sales suggestions that I'd give you. But, you know, as a small channel, we're really just trying to rank as high as possible at the moment. Meaning um, that, you know, a video on sales in the music industry is not going to get heard. Nobody will click on it and then it's just a waste of everybody's time. So I'm going to release those in future videos for your own reference. But if this has been of use to you, I really hope it has. Thank you so much for watching. In my last video, I started to get a little bit of attention and cross my fingers that this one will start to get out there a little bit more too. Um, my name is David Sinclair Black and I look forward to seeing you in the next one.